AutoSys Workload Automation Installation in Single Server Mode on Linux with a Microsoft SQL Server Database. In this module, we will learn how to install AutoSys Workload Automation in Single Server Mode on Linux using a Microsoft SQL Server Database and validate the installation. The following are prerequisites when installing AutoSys Workload Automation Server. To perform an AutoSys installation on Linux, log in as sudo or root user. Check whether the IP address returned by the hostname command matches the IP address returned by the nslookup command. You must install the SQL Server Client Tools, RPM Package, MS SQL Tools, and ODBC Software. Unix ODBC Dev. On the computer where you plan to install the AutoSys Workload Automation Server and confirm you can connect to the database. The database must be created before the installation. A user with database administrator permissions is required to create AutoSys database objects during installation. An instance of CAEM must be installed and accessible. The IAM admin administrator user password is required during installation. If there is insufficient space in the $tempter directory, set the IATempter environment variable to configure the temp location to a path with sufficient space. For more detailed information, please refer to the AutoSys workload automation documentation. In this video, we will install AutoSys on a Linux server. We will use a Microsoft SQL Server database. Before starting the installation process, it is essential to ensure there is connectivity from the AutoSys server to the database server and the CAEM server. We must also validate that we can access the database from the AutoSys server. For this, we need to have installed and configured the Microsoft SQL Server client utilities. Additionally, we will require a database administrator user to create the database objects and the CAEM administrator user to register AutoSys. Also, we must have downloaded the software and validated it with the checksum. Let's start validating if we have connectivity to the CAEM server and the database server. We ping the CAEM server. We received a response. We can reach the CAEM server. Let's ping the database server now. We received a response. We have connectivity to the database server. Next, we validate the ports are open. We execute a telnet command to the CAEM server with the port defined during its installation, 5250. We received a response. We do the same with port 1433 of the database server. We received a response. The port is open. Let's now try to connect to the database. We execute the Microsoft SQL Server command SQL CMD to log into the database with the SA user. We logged in successfully. We have already validated the connectivity to the servers involved in this installation. Our last validation is to verify the CAEM administrator user. To do this, we open a browser and log into CAEM with the administrator user. The user logged in successfully. We have validated the CAEM administrator user. We log out of CAEM and return to Linux. Now we mount the DVD. The DVD is mounted and we can start the AutoSys installation. We navigate to the DVD directory, run the install program, and wait until the program launches. The installation wizard appears. Press Enter to continue. Type 0 to skip to the end and select Y to accept the license agreement. Press Enter to choose Option 1 for product installation. 
Enter 2 to select the custom installation. The Express option presents us with fewer installation options. With the custom option, we can further configure the installation according to our requirements. Press Enter to select the Java bundled with the product. Now we get the selected components list for the Autosys server installation. The components are the scheduler, the application server, the REST web service, the client, the agent, the SDK, and the secure soccer adapted SSA. The installation path appears. Press Enter to choose the default. The shared components installation path appears. Press Enter to choose the default. The Autosys instance name appears. Press Enter to keep the default ACE. In this demo, we will use the default key for instance level data encryption. However, this is not recommended in a production environment. For production environments, the best practice is to select the option to encrypt data using a user-defined key. Press Enter to use the instance level encryption values also for the agent. Select No option. We will not enable FIPS 142. We will not install Autosys in clustering now. Select Option 1 for Microsoft SQL Server Database. Select No for not installing dual event servers. We will install a single event server. Select Option 1 to create the database schema. In the primary event server properties, we enter the database server name. We enter the database name. And press enter to select the default 1433 port. Press Enter to use the Microsoft SQL Server SA admin user. And enter the password. Now we enter the Autosys database user. We leave the default Autosys. And enter the password the user will have. This user will be created during Autosys installation. Now we enter the CAEM server name and the CAEM administrator user password for the scheduler component we leave the default auxiliary port 7507 for high availability we select the no option we will not configure high availability at this time The application server name in this case is the same server AEPRI where we are installing. We leave the default application server port 9000 and the auxiliary port 7500. We leave the default web services REST communication port. We leave the default agent name WA agent. We will not activate the port multiplexing for the agent at this time. We leave the default agent port 7520. We will not activate SNMP at this time. Press Enter. We leave the default 9000 application server port. We only have one application server at this moment. Here we enter the owner and the group for the Autosys files. We leave the default Autosys for both. To select the default options, press Enter. Now we choose if we want to start the Autosys services just after the installation. Press Enter to select No. Here we press Enter to select Yes to start the services automatically at system startup. 
press enter to accept starting all the autosys services at system startup this section is to activate the product enter your company domain usually the last part of your company's email address just as an example we enter broadcom.com now we enter the company's site ID. It is the ID assigned by Broadcom to your company. We enter zero just as an example. Now we indicate if we want to send Broadcom telemetry data about product license usage. Press enter to send telemetry data. The AutoSys scheduler sends telemetry data to Broadcom through port 443. You can optionally secure this port by using a proxy server to allow only authenticated access. We are now ready to start the installation. Here we can see the installation summary information. We can see where the installation logs will be written to. The installation type, a fresh custom installation. We press enter to move forward with the installation summary where we can see the rest of the installation options we have selected. We press enter to begin the installation and wait until it is complete. The installation has been completed successfully. Here we can see the REST web server URL. We copied it to use later when we installed the web UI component. We can also see the location of the installation locks. Press enter to exit the installer. Let's go now to the logs directory. This is the logs directory. Here we have the autosys installation logs. This is the summary installation log, the common components log, the web component log. This is the installation detail log with the messages generated during installation. In case of any installation errors or doubts, we can refer to this log for more information. Now let's verify the installation. First, we check if the services are active using the ustat command. The services are not active. We execute the uni srv cntr command and we get the command options. We execute the command again with the start option followed by waae agent and the agent's name to start the agent. The agent has started. We switch to Autosys user. We go to the auto user ACE instance directory under the Autosys installation path and load the environment variables. We start the application server of the ACE instance with the AS underscore server command. Now we execute the eventer command to start the scheduler component. We can see on the scheduler log that the system is running in single server mode. The event server is connected. The local host machine definition has been set to AEPRI. The AutoSys scheduler startup is completed. The machine AEPRI is online. The agent in the machine AEPRI is responsive. AutoSys is now up and running. We exit the eventer. We enter the command autosys log with the S option to open the application server log. The application server is running. We enter the command autosys log with the E option to open the scheduler log. 
The scheduler is running. We now enter the command chk underscore auto underscore up with the option R followed by 111 to know the status of the event server, application server, and scheduler. There is connectivity with the database. The application server is running and the scheduler is running. Let's list the machines defined executing the auto rep command with the option M all. We have the AEPRI machine and it is online. Let's see if there are jobs defined with the auto rep command with the J all option. There are no jobs. We haven't defined any yet. We define a test job using the Jill command. We enter the job name and the machine where the job will run. In this case, this machine AEPRI. And the ls command the job will execute. The job has been created successfully. Now let's execute again the autorep command to list the jobs. And here we have the test job. Its status is inactive. We run the job using a send event command with the four star job option. And open the scheduler log again. We can see the job was executed successfully. Let's check the job status. We execute the auto rep command and see the job is now in success SU status. With this, we have verified the product was installed successfully. We have completed the installation of Autosys on a Linux server with a Microsoft SQL Server database. In this module, we have learned prerequisites and considerations for Autosys workload automation installation, how to install Autosys workload automation in single server mode on Linux with a Microsoft SQL Server database. How to locate the Autosys workload automation installation locks and how to validate the installation.